You're watching World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. The world's biggest emerging economies have their plates full with challenges to free trade and the specter of sluggish growth. Ahead of the leaders' summit, BRICS foreign ministers gathered in Pretoria to discuss how their countries could work together, if possible, to create a stable environment for more balanced and inclusive growth, not just for these countries, but also for the rest of the world. BRICS is the acronym for an association of five major emerging economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Foreign ministers from BRICS members have spent the day in Pretoria discussing governance, multilateralism, and trade. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi says BRICS nations share international obligations in safeguarding global stability and advancing common development. We need to deepen the cooperation, digging to new driver forces of full growth and focus on innovation. We need to stick to dialogue and consultation, deepen mutual trust and set an example into state relations. Be open and inclusive. BRICS countries do face problems of their own, no longer enjoying the growth momentum that started a decade ago. There are other challenges such as Western sanctions on Russia and political turmoil in Brazil. Meanwhile, the world is witnessing unprecedented changes and challenges, rising unilateralism and protectionism, a re-emerging Cold War mentality, income inequality, and social instability. Better cooperation among BRICS members has become more important. The evolving world in which we live requires us to keep track with multifaceted and dynamic changes that are occurring. We are also beholden to our resolutions and ensuring that we realize them in this changing world. The meeting is expected to lay the foundation for the annual summit of the grouping in Johannesburg next month, which will be an important milestone for BRICS cooperation, as it represents a decade of BRICS ties at the highest diplomatic level. For more talks about the BRICS meeting, let's ask our panelists. They are coming from four of the five BRICS countries with us in our Beijing studio. Wang Yiwei, Zhang Monet, Chair Professor and Director of the Center for European Studies with Zhenmin University. Professor Wang just came back from South Africa. Good to see you, sir, here. Here in Beijing, we want to welcome Mr. Madhav Nalapat, the UNESCO Peace Chair and Director of the Geopolitics and International Relations Department at Manipal University, coming from India. Good to see you, Professor, here in Beijing. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And also, we have in Moscow another guest joining us who's going to talk to us later in the program. And now, in Johannesburg, South Africa, we have Luanda Muponose who is a researcher under the governance and the foreign policy program with South African Institute of International Affairs. One of the things more important is also at the same time about global trade. The Professor Nalapad, I want to invite you here. When you see the G7 finance minister, their meeting almost becomes so-called the G6 plus one. So many people wonder about mm -hmm. what about the trade agenda? For the BRICS countries, how are these biggest emerging economies are going to come together? Do they have, Professor Nalapat, the capability of safeguarding the global trade rules? Well, I'd like to say that China has been a very strong supporter of a system of trade which is open and where you know countries basically welcome a trade with each other and they don't impose protectionist measures. In that, it is now quite a contrast from the United States which is now imposing protectionist measures. For example, if you were to take the United States uh, trade uh, office seriously, Canada, uh, fr um, France, the UK, the EU are actually major security threats for the United States. Japan is a security threat for the United States, yes, which frankly is quite absurd. So I think India as well believes in open trade. Our Prime Minister has said that several times, as has the President of China. So I think on, so far these two economies are concerned, they're on the same page. Right. Uh, let's also have uh, Professor Wang here with us in Beijing. I mean, you've been working on the, the uh, Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, for quite some time. Free trade is extremely important. That is the fundamental that BRI is going to rely on in a way. So, uh, Professor Wang, the question, though, is will emerging economies together be able to be strong enough to safeguard the rules of the global trade. Emerging economies all want global trade. Definitely. BRICS, uh, even uh, this concept, uh, 
produced by the West. Uh, it's a more Gaussian Sachs for investment the diversity, but a more, more political, strategic cooperation, people mm. to people uh, connections, which uh, more represents a new type of uh, international relations. Our BRICS members, it's not like the US led or European uh, led uh, some multilateral. Uh, Call and the periphery of systems. We are very equal. Mm. Uh, there is no one the dominant BRICS. Uh, right. But the so question whether you have the capability of safeguarding global trade rules, that's my question. It's a very important question. I come it's back also and shows the, the relevancy system. of this forum, yeah. whether it is relevant or not. Of course, uh, BRICS now is safeguarded of the multilateralism and trade is uh, definitely is global even. And uh, emerging countries that uh, even the volumes may be less than the uh, rest, mm. but uh, dyna very dynamic. Uh, so the trade volume more increased from uh, China, from other uh, emerging countries. So I think uh, now is the test whether the emerging countries can really play a role, not just the, uh, to the, the make the voice be heard, but right. also reform the political uh, uh, international system to keep the multilateral system moving on, but uh, reform to be more opening, uh, inclusiveness, and sustainable. That, that's interesting. You talk about reform. Yes, indeed, Professor Wang. That has been the topic for quite some years. Uh, even though we see some reform, the pace is relatively slow. Having said that, though, we also joined in uh, Russia by Mark Sleboda, who is a international relations security analyst over there. Uh, Mr. Sleboda, though, this is not a new topic, the reform of the international system. But now it's not just about the reform of the international system. The bottom line has already become much lower, which is whether this international system still works and whether there is going to be enough safeguard for the current international system. It, it seems that people have long forgotten there has to be a lot of work needed for the reform because now it's the really co the existence of the international system or not, Mr. Slobodan. Yeah, there, there's a problem when we're talking about the term international system because often countries such as Russia, China, India, and the West, when they speak of the international system, are speaking of two entirely different systems. Russia and China speak of the international system created in the post-World War II era with the created of the UN, the UN Security Council, and the UN uh, uh, charters founding uh, bedrock principles of non-interference in domestic affairs and sovereignty and respect for other states sovereignty. While the West speaks of the liberal international order, the post-92 era, that it, it began perhaps during Bretton Woods, but especially with the collapse of the Soviet Union, where the U.S. came to be a, 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 a veritable hegemon, a, a unipolar era. And that is the control of the heights of global finance and trade, uh, as well as militarily, that they are trying to still enforce around the world, a kind of a, a um, fight back against the emergence of a multipolar world. Going into history and, uh, for a IMF, long time, uh, but my question really issue, to you, Mr. Sloboda, the question is the core question. That is, is the international system that we're talking about, particularly the international trade system, can be guarded well by the emerging economies coming together, such as in the platform of the BRICS country. We don't want to go that far back into the history. Yeah, no, I don't think they have yet shown the strength of purpose. Um, they haven't shown the strength of unity required to act together uh, uh, against the unipolar system. I think the BRICS um, has uh, basically hit kind of a, a, a frozen period. It's paused with the uh, seizure of power in Brazil by a uh, right-wing leader in, in what amounts to a legislative coup. India moving closer in relations to the United States, flirting with them militarily, with the Quad, in what they now term the Indo-Pacific. Okay. And even in South Africa, there have been critiques of South African president, the new South African president, Ramaphosa, is, is flirting with the West and moving away from BRICS. So uh, BRICS certainly isn't that forum, and if BRICS isn't that forum for emerging powers, right. uh, you know, to exert their influence, then there isn't any hope for it at the current time. What about those questions raised by uh, Mr. Sloboda, uh, Professor Nalafat from India? Uh, are the internal political situations 
within some of the BRIC countries and the different stages of spearing up their economy once again. We know some economies are slow, some are much better, but will those differences be able to prevent these BRICS countries, emerging countries, come together and guard the most important thing, which is the international trade rules? Well, I'd like to say that uh, our Russian friend has pointed to some political trends, but may I point out that because of social media, and because of the higher conscientization of the people, the, it is much more difficult now to continue to impose policies where the people at large are shortchanged. And a lot of the policies that uh, the Bretton Woods system introduced are policies that basically benefited a few people and a few countries. Mm -hmm. Now, when an effort is made to go beyond those policies, those few people and those few countries naturally are resisting that. But I'm not as pessimistic as he is. Take, for example, India. Recently, we opened, uh, we're, along with our Iranian friends, the Chabahar port. And India and Iran have excellent relations. India and Russia have been having good relations for the last uh, 70 years. I mean, recently, Prime Minister Modi and President Putin met at Sochi. Mm. Now, at the same time, India and the United States have very close relations, and these are getting closer. So I think the West is, will have to be more pragmatic, but I agree with him that it will become more pragmatic mm. only when leaders in the rest of the world stand up for their interests and tell them, look, you can't have a system okay. which works for you and not for everybody. Mm. So whose interests are first? Or will it become a question of whose rule is it? I think that is a big question in our world today. Professor Wang, Professor Nalapaz would like to say India's multilateral approach uh, on different platforms with different powers of the world. And what about China? Yeah, China is the same, I think. Uh, we have the SEO summit is being held in Qingdao. Shanghai Cooperation Organization, just for those who do not know all of these abbreviations. Also, I think <laughs> BRICS is also a contribute to the G20. Uh. If BRICS fail, G20 will fail. And then uh, that's terrible for the world. Mm. So BRICS should work together, but it should not uh, uh, work alone. We should work together with the European Union, with all other uh, stakeholders. So called the BRICS Plus, I think this initiative, China last uh, summit, I think is very popular now mm. in the BRICS uh, member states. Uh, BRICS Plus meaning BRICS with other emerging and also developing economies mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, BRICS is the hope of the uh, new international relations. and. Uh, Maybe it cannot uh, safeguard the uh, openness or the including mm. by themselves, but uh, if we work together to point it to that direction and work together with other stakeholders, but, but I think Professor it's possible. Wang, you do see the different BRICS countries, particularly China, Russia, and India, whose economy seems to be on the upswing, even though Russia is slow as a result of sanctions, but still picking up right now. They are trying to create their own reaching out ways to the rest of the world. And they try to create their own logic of international relations. So how will all these complicated logics of all these interesting countries within BRICS be able to work together, not against each other? I think that is the thing we are talking about here. All the webs that they have created individually, how will they come together rather than separate them? Professor so Wang, it's new giving me a big smile. New, new I guess you in John Tanya's work, you talk about this, right? <laughs> We, I, I can just come back from Johannesburg. There is the BRICS Academic Forum, yes. which also uh, mentioned many things about that. That this is a new baby, how to create a story that we are to the born, uh, actually, uh, for kind of the mission, uh, even separated by different uh, continent. Okay. But actually, we are the uh, same uh, identity. So this is, the, of course, a long way to go. Mm. Professor Nalapa, you have some views about that? Well, uh, I'd like to say that, frankly, my problem with BRICS, it's not been ambitious enough. Now, it should aim, for example, at much easier... Our Indian friend access. is always ambitious, right? Well, <laughs> I, 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 uh, you know, uh, well uh, not enough in the case of India also. Now, for example, <laughs> visas. We need to ensure that I visas think, are more common. Me, uh, uh, yeah. We need to ensure, for example, that each other's currency. Why can't we trade more in each other's currencies? Now, there are, uh, we, there are so you many... You mean currency days. swap? Uh, is that what you're saying? Precisely. Mm -hmm. Precisely. So my point is, we need to go, frankly, beyond some self-imposed boundaries, and we need now to take some bigger leaps. Okay. Let's see if the leaders of the BRIC countries are going to hear our voices. Let's also go to Ms. Mumboze in South Africa. Can you hear me yes. clearly this time? 
I can hear you better. What yeah. about that? I mean, these countries all have their own little universe they have created beautifully. But how will these webs be able to wave together to make sure these countries working together and it's going to be five together bigger than five? I think um, I, I'd like to just start by saying that some of the nuances of the BRICS is that the BRICS is only like 10 years old, firstly. It's such a, they like the new kids in the block. And for people that are a, a grouping that is like 10 years old, they've been able to accomplish quite significantly. And, you know, they, not, they, they don't seek to compete with the international order as it is, but they seek to complement it as representatives of the developing South. That's their mandate. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are countries that are sovereign, that have their own national interests, and that's what pursuing they don't seek to misrepresent themselves by saying that they're doing something else however they want to take the developing south with it mm -hmm. if you look at the BRICS currently and its outreach in Africa leading up to the summit you'll notice that some of the, the invitees as part of like the, Br the BRICS plus outreach is that there are key African countries current and incoming chairpersons of like some key regional communities there's like the regional ecom economic communities of the mm. developing south and the, the Secretary General of the United Nations so you kind of have to see how they try to rope in the discussions and not just talk, talk right. about the BRICS in a vacuum but also seek to also advance like the interests of the developing south so in my, in, my, in my vantage point I do want to look at what what actually the BRICS outcomes will be for Africa and how Africa can actually also synergize with the BRICS to get some developments. Yes. A colleague um, earlier mentioned that Cyril Ramaphosa is moving away from the BRICS and leaning west and I would sort of discourage that thinking of the one or the other. Uh -huh. South Africa is open for business as it has said and it actually seeks to advance its interest whether it be in the west or in the BRICS but the BRICS relies an important partner to South Africa. See, in all the standard. BRICS countries have, and their representatives have very strong minds here to speak out for their own countries and Absolutely. certainly for the common good of the BRICS. Before we go, one final question. If every one of you give one sentence, that will be fine. I know you're great speakers, but one sentence if you can. Will BRICS, this mechanism, still remain competitive if you see all the things going on? SCO, the G7, you also see the different kinds of summit, even including Trump and Kim in a few days. All of these things going on around us, world is changing fast. Will BRICS remain relevant? That is the ultimate question. What about, what about uh, your thought? Let's go to South Africa. One sentence if you can. What does it take? I think if I can give you just two words, yes. um, or rather four words. The BRICS remains important in terms of like the global rules and agenda setting. They are part, they have a seat at the table in terms of those two things. All right, Professor Nalapat. Well, I'd like to say that I do believe geopolitical winds are changing and that's uh, part of the reason why the, the, the Trump administration is no longer taking an Atlanticist view but an Indo-Pacific view. So the winds of change are coming and they're inevitable. Mm. Uh, Mr. Slobada from Russia. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that is really needed that is lacking is geopolitical alignment. Uh, the, the BRICS nations are always very sure to devour block development. Right. But the world is becoming increasingly polarized, and the BRICS aren't aligning. And if they can't do that, then they can't cooperate effectively together. One sentence, if you can, Professor Wang. That's a test. <laughs> <laughs> BRICS is not just a It's an intercontinental uh, cooperation. Mm. BRICS is like a uh, bicycle. You should uh, keep balance by moving on. I think they still have both. Five wheels. Bicycle. That's interesting. But uh, I'm well, going to keep that analogy in mind and see how BRICS are moving forward. Wang Yiwei, uh, Matt Half Nalapat, Mark Sloboda, and Luanda Mupose coming from China, India, Russia, and also South Africa of the BRICS country. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Really appreciate it.